Hello, my name is Shahriyar Shahriyari, and this is a basic algebra short video about square root of x squared and square root of nine. So if someone asks you what's x squared equals x squared equals nine and what is x, they want you to solve that, find the values of x for which this works. The answer is that there are two solutions. X could be three or it could be minus three because both of those, three and minus three, if you square them, if you multiply them by themselves, you get nine. On the other hand, someone might ask you, what's square root of nine? On the face of it, you might think these two questions are the same, asking what the solutions to x squared equals nine are and what is square root of nine? Because square root of nine propose, means that a number that if you multiply by itself, you get nine. And, and that should be maybe the same as what x squared equals nine is. However, square root of nine is defined to be just three, the positive one, and not plus or minus three. Square root of nine means it's three. And that's a convention. It's a definition. It's something we have decided as mathematicians. And the reason we have decided that is basically because we want the function y equals square root of x to be a well-defined function. In other words, a function, when you plug in a number, out should come one number. There, it should be very clear that if I plug in nine in here or 16 or 25 or four or two or three, anything, it should be very clear what the answer is. There should not be no ambiguity. There shouldn't be a choice of numbers. If you get plus or minus three, then this will not be a function. So, for, so if someone asks you what's x squared equals nine, then what is the solution? Then you cannot say it's incorrect if you say x is equal to square root of nine. If you say I take square root of both sides and I get x equals square root of nine, because s square root of nine is just three. It doesn't give you the other solution, which is minus three. And so the correct way of writing that is x equals plus or minus square root of nine. This also explains why, which is plus or minus three. This also, this, this, this notation um, explains why in the um, quadratic formula, we have a plus or minus. The reason is that often when you're solving a quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, often there are two solutions. And those two, and, and when you write it at the square root of b squared minus 4ac, that square root itself, by what I said, just gives you the positive, does not give you the two solutions. So you need to put the plus or minus because you need to get both possibilities. Um, so someone might ask you, well, what's square root of x squared when x is an unknown um, and indeterminate, something we don't quite know what it is, and we have given it a name x. And, and I might ask you, is the answer x or plus or minus x? And this, the answer is that it's neither. It's neither x nor plus or minus x. You might say, didn't you just say square root of nine is just three? Wouldn't square root of x squared be just x? No, because we don't know if x is positive or negative. So in particular, for example, if I have square root of minus two squared, minus two squared, if my x is minus two, if square root of x squared was x, I would have got minus two because it was minus two squared. But minus two squared is four and square root of four is two and not minus two. So how do we get around that? The way we get around that is by saying that square root of x squared is absolute value of x. Absolute value of x means you plug in x and what you get is the positive version. Absolute value of minus two is two. Absolute value of two is two. So square root of x squared is absolute value of x squared um, I mean, absolute value of x, not x squared. Um, and the, uh, the reason for that is that the answer has to be positive. And by putting the absolute value, we know that it's positive. So what you need to remember is that the square root of anything squared, apple squared, is absolute value of apple. So let me give you an example why this becomes um, somewhat important. So let's say someone says, solve this equation, square root of x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals 2. Um, that means find all the values of x that makes this equation true. There's different ways of doing this. I want to do uh, one correct way and one incorrect way uh, to make a point. So one way to do it would be to say that x squared minus 6x plus 9 is x minus 3 squared. X, if you take x minus 3 and square it, meaning take x minus 3 times x minus 3, you get x squared minus 3x minus 3x, that's minus 6x plus 9. So that's, that's what that is. And then if I want to find square root of x squared minus 6x plus 9, I have to find square root of x minus 3 quantity squared. And by what I said, square root of apple squared is absolute value of apple. This is absolute value of x minus 3. So the thing that I want to solve, the equation that I want, the original equation that I wanted to solve 
is absolute value of x minus three equals two. Now, when is absolute value of x minus three equals two? Absolute value of what is two? Well, absolute value of two is two, but so is absolute value of minus two. And so for absolute value of x minus three to be two, x minus three itself could be either two or minus two. So there's two possibilities. If I pick two, I get x minus three equals two and x becomes three plus two equals five. If I pick minus two, I get x minus three equals minus two and x becomes three minus two is one. And therefore I get two solutions, x equals five or x equals one for my solutions to that original equation. Now the cautionary tale. What if I did the following thing? I said, well, as we had discussed before, square root of x squared minus six x plus nine is square root of x minus three squared. Can I say, well, square root of something is the same as that thing to the power one half. That is definitely a definition. So it's definitely true that square root of x minus three squared is x minus three squared, all raised to the power one half. And I remember there must be a power rule that says that the power of the power you multiply. So could I just say, well, that's x minus three because two times one half is one and x minus three raised to the power one is, um, well, it's just x minus three. But then if I do that, then I will say that I wanted to solve square root of x squared minus six x plus nine equals two. If that's equal to x minus three, then I want to solve x minus three equals two and I get the answer x equals five. And then the question is that, what happened to the other solution, x equals one? Was x equals one really a solution? You can plug it in and you see it is. One squared minus six x, one minus six is minus five plus nine is four and square root of four is two. One is a solution, but this method of solution, did solving it, did not give us the x equals one. So what went wrong? What went wrong is that the exponent rule, a to the r to the s is a to the r s. When you have a power of a power, you multiply the exponents, works only if the base is a positive number. It does not work for negative numbers. But where was the negative here? The fact was that we didn't a priori before we started know that x minus three is positive. In fact, if x is going to be one, x minus three is not positive, is negative, and that rule does not work. So you have to be careful. Sometimes when you have variables, you don't know if the base is positive. And so because we don't know if x minus three is positive or negative, um, it's not true that um, uh, x minus three squared to the one half equals x minus three. It does not necessarily equal that. So you have to be careful about the power rule the power of a power you multiply, that rule only works as well as the other rules for exponents if the base is positive. There's another way to solve this problem, which is to square both sides. If you have two things equal, well, if you multiply uh, this side by itself and that side by itself, still going to be equal, and that will work. So if you square both sides, you get x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals 4. And if you solve that, you will get both uh, solutions. This is the end of this lecture. If you wanted to learn more about exponents, watch my longer videos. See you next time.